What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're working with Flutter. So it's day eight in hashtag 30 days of Flutter and today we're going to be building out a settings screen. So we're going to be able to toggle a couple switches. We're going to be, you know, saving state for different um, list tiles and I'm going to be going over how to interact with each of those list tiles. Now additionally what we're going to do is we're going to be using shared preferences which is going to allow us to save simple data into the actual device. That means that whenever we save this data, if we were to close the app, then we can open it up and see our settings just as we had left them before. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right on in. And as you can see, we're going to start off at pub.dev. We're going to start searching for shared preferences like so. We're going to hit bam, and then we're going to hit bam, and then we're going to scroll down. We're going to be like, how do we do that? And we can see right here. So what we want to do is we're going to be getting this shared preferences instance, right? And this is going to be an asynchronous function. From there, what we can do is we can set or we can get values, right? We could just get our preferences and do get whatever the type is, and then we'll be able to pull that value out. When we want to set the value, it's going to be an asynchronous function, which we're going to be setting that value for a key and we're going to pass the value in. So relatively simple. It's kind of like working with a map or a dictionary, um, but we're just calling it preferences. Now let's go over to our installing area. We'll copy this bad boy. We're going to take it over to pubspec.yaml. We're going to drop down to the dependencies. We're going to save it like boom. And we're going to go over to our main app. Now, if you want to take a look at the app, it's already running and it's just simple. There's nothing really going on with it, right? So what we want to do is we're going to be working with a list view widget. Now, a list view is very similar to a column, except that it allows for scrolling. And we're going to be putting different types of list tiles inside of our list view. So under the children um, object, let's go ahead and start off with a text field inside of a list tile. And let's present that on screen. All right, so here we go. For the body of the scaffold, we have this list view. The list view has children. The first child inside of that list view is gonna be this list tile with a title of text field. If we go ahead and pull this up, we can see that we have our text field right here and we can just go ahead and start typing in there, right? Perfect. Now there is some styling that I wanna to do to this uh, tile. I just wanna make sure that it has a label that says username so that we know what we're supposed to put in there, right? That would be pretty uh, cool. And then also we wanna have a controller because we're going to be pulling the, the value out of this text field and interacting with it and saving it later. So let's do that now. All right, so now inside of our list tile and our text field, we have a controller, which is simply going to be this controller right here, our username controller of type text editing controller. And then for the decoration on the text field, we have an input decoration, which is going to take a, la a label text and a username for that, that string. So let's take a look at it. Does it look nice? Oh, it most certainly does. If we hit done, bam, it goes away. Look at that user, it just pops right there. It, 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 pops. All right. So next, what we want to do is we want to start working with the other list tiles, right? So the next field that we're going to show in our settings is going to be gender. Now, in order to do that, let's go ahead and create a model that's going to represent the different states of gender that we can have. I'm going to do that in a new file called models. All right. So we have our, ooh, our models. Oh, we have our models.dart file and here we have this enum called gender. We have three different um, possibilities, right? Female, male, and other. Sorry if I'm not inclusive enough. I apologize. It's not, it's not intentional, but anyways, so we have our three possible models. Now what we want to do is we want to represent um, each of these in our settings and you can only be one gender um, and we want to make it so that you can only select female, male, or other. Right. So what we'll be doing is we'll be working with a radio, a radio list tile. So radio list tiles are used when you can only have a single selection for a group of possibilities. In our case, it would be gender, right? Only one selection from a group of possibilities. So over here, let's go ahead and add in three different radio tiles um, that represent each of the, the genders.
All right, so there we go. We have three radio list tiles. Now, remember, whenever you're working with a list tile, any list tile has a property called title, and you can set whatever you want to it. So I'm going to just put in a text, right? So we're going to start off in the same order that we uh, created them in. So we have uh, text, or we have uh, the value for this radio list tile is going to be female. And then we have to have a group value. So each of the list tiles that are related to each other need to have um, a common group value. And that's going to be this selected gender, which I created up here. So it's a variable called selected gender. By default, it's just going to have the value female, right? So we're going to give it a default value of just starting off with female, and then you can choose something different if it's different, right? Then in the on changed, what's going to happen is we're going to get this new value. Whenever we get this new value, we're just going to call set state, and then we're going to update the selected gender to that new value. We're doing the same thing for all three of these. Now, we're going to have dirty code in this tutorial, but I actually challenge you to go back and refactor all of the dirty code that you find in here. And um, if you do that, I'd really be interested if you like sent me pictures or something like that on Twitter. Um, I love to see when like people actually like take action on the tutorials. They don't just watch them without doing anything. So really cool to see. Anyways, um, we have our radio list tiles. Now, if we pull up the app and we take a look at it, all of them are at, I need to make sure that I save it and let's take a look. There we go. So now we have female, male, and other. And if we select it, we can see that it only chooses one. So whenever one is selected, the other ones are not selected. So now we have our radio list tiles, which are really cool. The next section that we're going to be doing is going to be programming languages. So which programming languages do you know? Well, you're going to be able to choose from more than just one, right? It's not like you only know one or another, right? It's you can know multiple. So we're going to be using a checkbox list tile. So let's go ahead and create a new model, a new, ooh, a new model, right? And let's put a couple of different languages that we can possibly know. All right, so now we have this programming language enum, and we have the possibility of Dart, JavaScript, Kotlin, or Swift. Let's go back over to our main.dart, and now we need to hold on to um, a set of these languages, right? So we want to be able to have a collection of programming languages that we know, right? We need a collection of them because we might know more than one. We also don't want to have more than the same programming language in our collection, right? So we don't want to have Dart, 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 right? You only know Dart or you don't. True or false, right? So the collection that we're going to be working with is called a set. Now a set, you can think about it like a list or an array, except for the fact that it's not ordered and you could only have um, one of the of the value. So you can only have unique values inside of this collection. So that means that we either have Dart in there or we don't. We either have Swift in there or we don't. And we don't actually know the specific index of where that item is at. So we can't like just query by that specific index and expect to get the same thing every time. So let's go ahead and create an empty set that's going to hang on to the different programages that are program languages that are selected. And here we go. We have a property called selected languages. It's an empty set of programming language. Now down here, let's go ahead and add in um, our checkbox list tiles. So now you can see that we have the checkbox list style and we have four different um, list or checkbox list styles, right? And each of them are going to hold our uh, their respective languages. So Dart, JavaScript, Kotlin, and Swift. And if we actually take a look at our simulator, we can see that we have those checkboxes in here. Now, the way that we're handling the value of these checkbox list styles is we're, we're checking if it contains this value or not, because the value is really just a, a Boolean, right? It needs to be true or it needs to be false. It's expecting a Boolean. And the way that we determine this is by accessing our set of programming languages, checking if that, that set contains the specified programming language for that cell. So now if it contains Dart, that means that we will actually show a check mark. But if it doesn't, that means that the check mark will not be shown. And the way that we're going to update our values, because if we go over to the, the app 
If we go over to the app and we select it, we can see that nothing's happening. It's tapped, but nothing's happening. And that's because we don't have anything in the unchanged. So in the unchanged, it actually sends back what the value is, but there is some like weird timing stuff. So what we'll do instead is we're going to just do this check again inside the unchanged. And if it contains that programming language, then what we'll do is we'll remove it from the set. But if it doesn't contain the programming language, then we'll be adding it to the set. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add in that functionality now to each of our list tiles. All right, so there we go. I updated all of the different sets, all of the different unchanged methods to handle the different programming languages. Now look at how stanky this is. This is just, it ranked, right? So go back and make sure that you update all this stuff. I wanna see if you can do it. Anyways, once again, we're gonna be updating the state. So we need to make sure that we let Flutter know what the set state uh, function call. We're gonna, we're gonna do our check again. Does it contain our programming language Dart? Does it contain programming language Dart? Um, if it does, then remove it. If it doesn't, then we add it. Same thing goes for each and every one of these. If we save it, go back over to our app, and now if we tap um, Dart, we'll see that it's going to show up with a checkbox. So we can do that, do that, do that. So everything checks and unchecks as expected. So looking good so far. Next, what I wanna show you is the switch list style. So this is just gonna be a simple Boolean. Is this true or false? Is this on or off? And the, and the question that we're gonna be asking here is, is this user employed? So let's go ahead and add that uh, switch list style now. All right, so here's our switch list tile and it's going to have a title of is employed and then we have a value which is going to be this is employed property that i have all the way up here at the top is employed by default it's just going to be false so that means that the switch is going to be turned off by default then in the on change we're going to get it back a new value immediately what we'll do is we'll we'll let flutter know that we're going to change the state and then we'll update the is employed value to that new value if we save it and we go over to our app we should see the is employed switch tile and if we turn it on and turn it off everything's working as expected so that's really great we're done we pretty much have all of our ui set up with the exception of one thing how are we going to actually submit this when we're ready to save it so let's lastly just add a button onto uh, this list All right, so as you can see, we have this text button. We're using a text button because I found out that I guess we're not supposed to be using flat buttons. Somebody had mentioned that in the comments, so make sure that you're using text button. But anyways, we have this on press method, which is gonna be the save settings function, which we haven't implemented yet. And then the child is just gonna be this save setting. So let's go back over here. We have this button right here. We're not gonna do anything fancy to it. We'll just leave it as is, right? And now, we're pretty much ready to go. So let's think about what we want to do once we have all this information entered in, right? So we go ahead and we fill out this form. Then we hit save settings. What we want to do is we want to use our shared preferences to save all the information that was set here. But instead of passing over these values individually and having this like really long function name, let's go ahead and create an object that's going to encapsulate all the data that's on this form. So we'll just call this, uh, we'll just go up to our models, our, our models.dart file, and we'll create a new object called settings. All right, so we have this new settings class. It's gonna have a username, gender, programming language, and is employed. So pretty much a direct um, representation of everything that we can save on the form. So now down here in our save settings, let's create this new object. All right, so we have our new settings right here. We're just creating an instance of the settings, passing in all the relevant information into the correct um, arguments for our constructor and then we're just going to print out our settings. So if we go back over to our app and we do save settings, we should get an instance of our settings and we can see that right there. So really, really small, but it's there. Okay, 
Now that we have our UI updated, we're ready to start saving our settings objects. Let's create a new file that's going to be called preferences service, and that's going to be responsible for handling all the logic that's involved with converting our, our settings into storable information and then also retrieving that storable information. So let's create a new file and we'll call this preferences service. All right, so as simple as that, we have our preferences service class. Now, what we want to do is we want to be able to save our settings. So let's create a new function that takes in settings as an argument, and we're going to be saving those. All right, so here's our new function called save settings, takes in the settings, right? Now, I want to go back over to our browser, and I want to take a look at how we implement the, the shared preferences uh, functionality, right? So remember that we have to get the instance of the shared preferences, and that's an asynchronous function, which means that we need to wait for it, and we're also going to need to mark our function with async. We also are going to need to await whenever we set a value on those preferences. So let's go ahead and start writing that out. All right, so we have an instance of our preferences right here, and um, now we're going to try to set a value on our preferences. So as you can see, we can only work with five different setters for the preferences. We could either set a Boolean, uh, a double, an integer, a string, or a list of strings. So let's go ahead and work with the two properties that are easy to set, which are going to be our username, because that's a string, and our is employed, because that's a Boolean. All right, so easy enough, we just do preferences.set and then whatever the property type is. So we set our username under this key called username. It could be literally whatever you want. You can change this to whatever you want. You're just gonna need to use this very same key, this very same string when you're trying to retrieve that data. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna set the value for, um, for, for this key, username, we're gonna set it to whatever's in settings.username. Same thing goes with is employed. We're gonna set it to whatever's in here. Now, let's go ahead and go with the next easier step, which is setting our gender. Now, when we're working with gender, let's go back over to our models.dart. When we're working with gender, it's an enum. And enums are really interesting because each enum value can be converted to an integer very easily because they are they each enum has an index on it. So when you're working with an enum, it has an index based off of its position whenever it was entered in. So this is going to be the zero index, this is one, and this is two, which means that it's very easy to turn objects or turn enums into numbers and turn numbers back into those enums. So we're going to actually save gender as an enum or as an in, as an integer. So let's do that now. All right, and as simple as that, we're gonna do set int for this key called gender, and we're gonna say send settings gender dot index. Okay, so it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We just needed to know that gender can be turned to index. Now, the, the programming languages is a little bit more complex because remember, we're, we only have a couple of different types that we can actually set. So if we do await preferences and type in set, we can see that we can only work with these five types. So it's not going to be a Boolean double or in or string because we're going to be working with a set of programming languages, right? So the closest thing that we could get is a list. So list and set are very, very similar because they're both collections, but we can't just put in random enums into this property. It's expecting only strings. What we can do since our programming language is an enum, we can convert the the programming language the whatever specified into an index just like we did with gender so we could convert each of these into numbers then we can take that number and turn it into a string and then we can save a list of strings so let's go ahead and do that now so here we go we have preferences dot set string list right we're going to specify the key as programming languages or whatever you want to put it under and then we're going to get the, the programming languages from our settings, right? From here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a map, which means we're going to iterate over each object that's in this collection. So if we have four of them, we're going to do four iterations. If we have one of them, just one iteration, right? So we're going to map and it's going to iterate and give you each individual uh, programming language as it iterates. From there, we're going to um, access that programming language 
get the index of that programming language, and then turn that index into a string. From there, remember whenever you're working with a, a dot map, it returns an iterable object. So at this point, we're a iterable, we're a, we're a iterable um, string, right? And what we need to do is we need to be a list of strings. So we just do dot to list then we're going to be able to save. So if we go ahead and do a print statement down here, we should see it say, um, say whatever we print out. All right. So only if we're able to successfully do all these things, should we be able to see this um, saved settings uh, printed out into our logs. Now we just need to call this function from our main.dart. So let's go over in here. Let's create an instance of our preferences service. All right, so we have an instance of our preferences service. And then down here in the save settings, we can just go ahead and call save settings. Now, remember that this is an asynchronous function. And if we wanted to do anything after we save those settings, we need to go back over to this, um, to this uh, save settings function. And we would need to turn this into a future. I'm not going to do anything here, but just so that you can have access to it in case you want to do something special, you could return a future here because whenever you're working with async, you're technically returning a future. Um, but if you don't specify it as a future, then you're not going to be able to properly await until after all of these um, operations complete to do the following functionality at the call site. So just wanted to throw that out there. Um, whether you want to do it or not, but all we want to do is just do um, preferences service dot save settings and we're going to pass in our new settings like that. So we don't care um, about when it finishes. We just want it to do its thing. So no await. So let's go ahead and reload that. And now when I open up my my app and I enter in some information, all right, so I entered in all my information, username, um, gender, programming language, and employment status, and I do save settings. Let's see. All right, so it looks like we did run into a little bit of an error. I did encounter this error before. Um, what I did before was I stopped the app, and we're going to actually delete this app from the device because I think it's just like a little bug that's um, caused by the, the library itself. And then we're going to go over to the terminal and we're going to run flutter clean. All right. After you do flutter clean, go back over to the pubspec.yaml file. We're going to do command S to save. And then let's just double check and make sure everything looks right. It does look okay right here. I don't think there's anything special or anything different that we need to do. So just go back over to the main.dart and run that. And let's see if we could get it to save this time. All right, so we have our app open back up. I'm gonna just go ahead and enter in all my information again. And then hopefully if everything works and we don't have that bug, then we should see in the debug console that we do get that save settings printed out. So there we go. So I'm not really sure what the problem is. I'm not sure if it's because we're going from not having any settings stored to needing to be able to save those settings or what have you but I just found that there is that slight little bug in there. So now we see that we have these saved settings, right? That's cool, but whenever I restart the app, we're gonna notice that the form is completely, you know, refreshed. Nothing actually got saved or nothing's being presented from a saved state. And that's because we're not doing anything. We're not actually getting back those saved settings. So back over in our preferences service, the opposite of saving is like retrieving. So we need to get the settings for our user and return those. So in a new function, we'll call it get settings and let's start building that out. All right, so here we go. We have this new function that's going to return a future settings. It's gonna be called get settings and it's gonna be an asynchronous function because we're gonna to need to be able to do this await on it. Then we'll have access to our preferences. So if we take a look at our browser again to see how they did it, once they have those preferences, they can just do dot get and then whatever the type is. So it's almost the inverse of what we did before. So instead of set, it's going to be get string, get bool, get integer. And then what we need to do is we need to, we need to make sure that we're turning these values back into the original types that, that they were before we converted them into savable types. So let's go ahead and do the three that are kind of easy. 
you know, string to string, bool to bool, this one is just going to be um, turning the index into a, um, into a gender. So we can do that and all of those are relatively simple. All right, here we go. So now we have the username because we can do get string on username. And remember that each of these keys, each of these strings that we have right here need to be spelled exactly like they are right here. So if you have any um, misspellings, then this is not going to work. You're not gonna be able to properly fetch the data. So username is get string to username, is employed get bool to is, in, is bool. And then gender, we want to convert that value into um, an actual gender object. So we saved it as an int under gender. Now, if we do have a value in here, then what we'll do is we'll just return that, that index, right? However, since we're going to be um, grabbing the gender by gender.values and we're gonna be subscripting, which is we're using these uh, square braces to pass in the index that we wanna get, we can't have a null index, right? So if this was null, and we try to pass null into a subscript of values, we would crash the app. So we're gonna give it a default value of zero. So it's saying we're try to get gender um, by an integer. If it's not in there, then default to zero. So we'll get essentially females right here if, if we don't have a value in there. So that's gonna be gender. Now let's kind of do the same thing with our, um, our programming languages. So we need to get all the indices, which are just a string, uh, a list of strings. All right, so as you can see, we stopped after we just did get strings under the programming languages key. And the reason for this is because this may be null. So if we were to try to continue and convert this into the actual programming language, then we would actually end up with um, a crash. So we need to turn this programming languages indices, which are strings, right, a list of strings. We need to convert them into uh, integers. And then from there, we'll be able to convert them into um, the actual enum, the programming languages. So let's go ahead and write that code now. All right, so here we go. We finally have um, a set of programming languages. You can see that it's a set of programming languages and we're doing that by um, accessing our programming language indices. So once again, a list of strings, we're going to map iterate over each of those objects, which we're gonna end up with just the index, which is going to be a string index. Then we're going to turn that index into an integer. Once we turn that index into an integer, we'll get the specific programming language based off of its index. And then we're going to turn that into a set of those programming languages. So now we can create our retrieved settings object and return it. All right, and there we go. So now we're returning a new settings object that's created with all of these values in here, username, gender, programming language, and is employed. Now back over in our main.dart, ooh, our main.dart, in my app state, what I wanna do is whenever we initialize this object, I want to try to populate each of these values with the values that we have saved in our shared preferences so that we are actually showing what was saved, right? So let's go ahead and create a new function that is going to populate our fields. And there we go. So in our populate fields function, we're accessing the settings. So we're gonna do get settings and remember this is an asynchronous function. We have to get that initial or get that instance of our shared preferences. And then once we get that settings returned in the set state, because we will be updating the state and Flutter needs to know about it, we're going to just simply pass in the values. So the username controller.txt is gonna be equal to the username, selected gender to the gender, languages to programming languages, and is employed to is employed. So now all we need to do is we need to make sure that we call this, and we only wanna call this once. So we'll do it in the init state method, which is only called once for every time this object is created. So then we'll just do populate fields and we're not going to do anything after so it doesn't matter that we don't call await and now if we go ahead and restart the app 
let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. We notice that we haven't saved it or updated it, right? And when we restart the app, since we're now doing it and we already saved some preferences, we should see that everything is loaded in from what, what was originally saved the first time around. And there we go, boom, it showed. So now whenever we update our state, so like if I wanted to change my gender or if I wanted to say like, for some reason, I'm crazy enough to only want to learn JavaScript, but I'm un unemployed for whatever reason, then let's do those save settings. And then if I go ahead and stop the app and I run it again, and bam, there we go. So as you can see, it does save the settings. So that's gonna be it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. And as you saw, we went through a lot of different concepts here, but what we didn't do was actually make our code nice and sexy and clean. Now, I want you to actually go back through this video or go back through your app, and I want you to actually refactor some of this code because as you can see right here on the screen, it's just, it's a mess. Oh my God, it stinks so bad. So that's gonna be it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, if I taught you something new, make sure that you leave some love. If you wanna see more videos like this, if you wanna keep following the hashtag 30 days of flutter challenge, then make sure you subscribe. And now that's gonna be it for today. I really enjoy your time. Now go out there and keep coding passionately.